Okay, here I have the Earth with a mass of capital M and the Moon with a mass of lowercase m. And I want to calculate the gravitational force on the Moon from the Earth. I can use Newton's law of gravitation, where I've got the mass m1, m2, but I actually prefer writing as capital M, lowercase m like this. F stands for the gravitational force of attraction in Newtons. G is a constant, capital G here. Newton's gravitational constant, which is 6.67 times 10 to the power minus 11. You can find that in your data sheets. Capital M in this case is mass one, which I'm gonna say is the Earth, and lowercase m is mass two, which is in this case is the Moon. R is the distance from the center of one to the center of the other in meters. Okay, so that's the distance from the center of one to the center of the other, like this. Okay, Newton's law of gravitation can also be written in words. In words, it would say, the gravitational force of attraction between two objects is directly proportional the product of their masses. So you multiply the masses together. And inverse proportional is the square of the distance between the center of the two objects. And if there's a force F on the moon, according to Newton's third law, there's going to be an equal and opposite force on the Earth. It's like this, in the opposite direction, like so. In this example, I want to calculate the force of gravity between the Earth and the Sun. Average distance between the Sun and the Earth is 1.5 tenths of, uh, to the 11 meters. Okay, I can use Newton's law of gravitation here. Uh, I need the mass of the Earth and the mass of the Sun in this case, which you can find normally in your data sheet or is given to you. And as you can see, that there was a number there. So I'm going to put that into the equation. G, uh, the capital G here, is the gravitational constant. Also, you can find that in your data sheet, 6.67 to the minus 11. With the mass of the earth mass of the sun together there and then i need to do the distance between the center one to the center of the other which is the average distance here 1.5 to 11 but don't forget to square this okay for the force you need to square this and that gives us the force okay, now i have the earth here but let's say instead of the force on a particular mass i want to find the gravitational field strength at some point which is distance r from the center of the earth, of the earth. okay i can use newton's law of gravitation but except i don't need the m there the mass of i will be placing at the point there so what i'm going to do is i know that force can be determined from uh, the gravitational gravitation field strength which is force per unit mass so instead of force i'm going to write mg okay and i'm going to replace that there and i'm going to cancel out the m's okay so before we used to use g as 9.81 all the time on the surface of the earth but now g is a variable because if you go further out from the surface of the planet, you can have a, or a different planet, you can have different uh, gravitational field strength. So this is a very useful equation. The gravitational field strength is equal to uh, the gravitational constant there, Newton's gravitational constant times the mass divided the distance from the center of the capital M mass to the point that you're interested in. In this question, I'll to show that the gravitational field strength on the surface of the Earth is 9.81 Newtons per kilogram. So let's say, for example, at this point here on the right of the surface, we're not going to take it as a given that it's 9.81, we're going to show that it's 9.81. So I can use the equation for gravitational field strength at some distance from the center. And in this case, the distance from the center is actually the radius of the planet itself because I'm interested on the gravitational field strength on the surface. Okay, so I can actually use capital R instead. So that's what I use instead for the radius of the planet. Okay, so I also need the mass of the Earth for this equation, so I can find that in my data sheet. Okay, I'll need the radius of the Earth, which you can either give in to you or find that in your data sheet again. So let's put these numbers in. Gravitational constant there, which is in your data sheet, times the mass of the planet Earth here. And then you've got the distance from center of the radius of the planet in this case. And don't forget to square it, and that gives us 9.813 newtons per kilogram, so which runs up 9.81. Okay, the diagram shows the satellite in a stable orbit around the Earth. The gravitational field strength due to the Earth at the point where the satellite orbits is 7.90 newtons per kilogram. Look at the height of the satellite above the surface of the Earth. Okay, so we've got the gravitational field strength at this point, which is 7.90. So we can use this equation here, but keep in mind R is the radius uh, from the center of the planet. So we, it's actually made out of the radius of the planet plus the number that we're looking for, which is the height above the surface. Okay, so we can write lowercase r as being made of um, the radius of the planet plus the height, uh, and that's inside the squared there. We'll need the mass of the Earth, uh, which is from our data sheet, and we'll also need the radius of the Earth from our data sheet, always going to be given to us. So let's put the numbers in. So the gravitational field strength is 7.9, the gravitational constant there, capital G, and the mass of the Earth, and lowercase r is what we're going to find first. So let's rearrange this. So bring the r squared to the other side and the square root. 
to give us a radius from the center. And from this, we'll have to subtract the radius of the planet to get the height. Okay, so we take 7.10 times 6 minus radius of, our, of the Earth, and that gives us the height above the surface which, which the satellite is orbiting, which is around 730 kilometers, which isn't too bad.